This episode of Wheels of Fury is brought to you by Bootios. Bootios, they make sure you ain't booty. Whatever the hell that means. Kill Kyle, and welcome to our Fast Lane Prediction Show. It's that time again. It wasn't that long ago that we had Fast Lane last year. Of course, Fast Lane was the first ever episode of Wheels of Fury, so pretty cool to, to go full circle here. Yeah. Start with our very first Wheels of Fury episode it was a Fast Lane Prediction video, and here we are one year later. Doing another fast lane prediction show. And I find interesting about it, looking at it just now, is there's actually no pre show. Which it's SmackDown, you don't really have a pre show that much. So I'm gonna start off with Match Becky Lynch and Naomi against Natalia and Carmella. Yes, this match actually happened recently because when I looked at it before, this match wasn't really advertised. So, it's pretty cool to see that. Like It wasn't really until just recently that there was things going on because there's a match on SmackDown this week with Carmella and Becky and then backstage there was a little conversation going on between Naomi and Natalia. And the Naomi was kind of cheering on Becky backstage watching the match and then Natalia comes up and they're talking about Natalia's doing the whole thing. Using Brett's catchphrase and oh, yeah. all this other stuff. and. So essentially, this tag match evolved from that. Yeah, it's one of those things where I understand that you're a heart and I understand your family legacy, but you really have to fucking remind everybody, like, stop using catchphrases from your uncle, like, seriously. But I really like Becky Lynch, you know, and Naomi's always pretty cool, Carmella is still money in the bank so i'm wondering when she's gonna cash in will she cash in on sunday i don't know you either cash in on sunday or leave it for a little later yeah i had a thought i don't know if it'll actually happen but there's been people that have cashed in really early, they've waited a little while, or they went from, like, WrestleMania to New Year's Revolution, or Money in the Bank to WrestleMania, or whatever, before they cast in. But there hasn't yet been a person that won the Money in the Bank contract, 
go from a Money in the Bank pay-per-view to another Money in the Bank pay-per-view, not cash in and possibly cash in the night of the next Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Now, that's not necessarily saying Carmella will wait that long, but it's just a thought that I've had. Yeah. Now, could Carmella potentially cash in on Sunday? More than likely, yes. Could she do it at WrestleMania? Potentially, yes. It really all depends. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to see, like, the female version of WrestleMania 31. Yeah. Or Seth Rollins cashed in in the main event, which was pretty cool, actually, but... Yeah, that if, was cool. If Carmella were to do it, it would have to be in an interesting circumstance, otherwise it'll just be lame. Well, yeah, I mean, especially if... Well, anyways, I think that she should actually try to cash it in soon. But I'm yeah. not sure if Sunday it's going to happen because I'm interested to see where that would go. And Yeah. Well, we'll get to that match later, but I'm going to say Becky and Naomi for the win. So I think... When Carmella decides to cash in, and it be like a legitimate, legitimate cash in, the timing's got to be right. Otherwise, it'll just be stupid or lame or whatever. Yeah. One thing that I have noticed is out of these four women, Naomi seems to have been the one that has had the most TV time. Yeah. Like, she's had... Well, she had another run with the SmackDown Women's Championship, and she's had several other appearances on SmackDown and matches. Becky, Natalia, and Carmella had just kind of been... Backstage. More or less. Yeah. And I mean... I think Natalia can be a good heel. I really liked her cat get up this Friday. Yeah. Well, Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, that was good. But, you know, the whole Bret Hart, Hitman puns and all that bullshit needs to end. You know, just get to the ass kicking, you know. But other than that, yeah, she makes a very good heel. Mm. Fucking... Becky Lynch, I think, and Naomi should win this match. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. It's kind of like, I like Naomi and Becky. I don't know what it is. Again, you have... I, I don't know what, how, what to say anymore. Yeah. I'm speechless. Yeah. But yeah, Becky and Naomi for the win. If they decide to carry this on as a feud, I think it would be beneficial to have Becky and Naomi win, only because that way you can have Natalia and Carmella have a gripe to continue their rivalry yeah. and, you know, have maybe Becky against Carmella again, and, or Natalia against Naomi, or Naomi against Carmella, and Natalia against Becky, and maybe do another tag match, and build off of it and do something with it. Yeah. Because, like I said, too, well, it's just that Carmella still got money in the bank, and if that's not in focus right now, it would be interesting to see that unexpectedly come into play at some point. So, I don't know. Like, I'm not gonna change my answer. No, but... no. Of course not. I believe that when Carmella originally won the Money in the Bank contract, the majority of the focus was on Carmella having a briefcase and you know her having interactions with 
Charlotte and Naomi when she held the championship. And just, they were working off of it and kind of making it interesting having Carmella have the championship. And, oh, who could she cast in on? Who's going to be the champion? And so on. Yeah. And after a while, it just kind of seemed to not be as important as it was. I mean, up until the whole fiasco with Baron Corbin, he was the front and center of the, well, men's division, right with uh, the champion at the time, which I think was John. You, or maybe it was Jinder Mahal. Yeah, I think it was, yes, it was Jinder Mahal. And so they were working with that, and again, when will Baron Corbin cash in? What, what would be the appropriate time? How long will they hold it for? And it was a big focus. And up until he lost his cash in opportunity, it was strong. It seems for some reason with Carmella, I don't know if lost interest in it or they are trying to not make it as out there and not make it as strong of a notable mind in the bank holder up in, and maybe have it actually be a real surprise when she cashes in because I mean like when other briefcase holders have had it they've been pretty much the main focus of when they cash in now it's been a mystery as to when they cash in but they've still been pretty much the main focus so I think with Carmella, they're kind of having everybody put it to their back of their mind that Carmella has the briefcase. Yeah. And then whenever they go, okay, Carmella, you're going to cash in on this night on Charlotte or Naomi or whoever, it'll be like, oh, yeah, I kind of forgot she had the briefcase and now she's cashing in. Okay, yeah. let's see what happens, you know? Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I mean, that's kind of, uh, it's a suspense, you know, like it's, okay, when is she going to cash in? But at the same time, it's like, well, putting it on a back burner. Yeah. And then when she, let's say when there's a title match going on and her music hits, and then she runs down the aisle, oh, oh, I forgot she was the Money in the Bank winner. So it's kind of interesting to see if that'll work out you know in her favor yeah so the question is you know if she wins the title how long will she have it i don't know that yeah that's the sustainable question yeah so yeah that's gonna be a good match i'm sure but well we'll see what happens on sunday yes So then we go on to Rusev versus Shinsuke Nakamura. We have a voiceless Aiden English in Rusev's corner. Yeah, then the whole thing that happened with that on SmackDown, it was kind of one of those things where it was like, okay, we need one more match for the Fastlane pay per view. Yeah. Okay, Rusev. You're going to interrupt Shinsuke Nakamura's interview. You're going to blame Nakamura for Aiden English not having a voice. And then we're going to challenge each other for a match at Fastlane. Because up uh, until that point on SmackDown, what backstory is there to this match? Um, there isn't one. No, I don't understand why... They have to throw things together. I mean, and they do. They want to fill out the card. They want to make sure your money is well spent when you go there. And that's great, but, you know, you have to have a little 
as they say, you gotta have some meat, you know, you know, where's the meat? Yeah. Then your product or whatever the the saying is, or I, you know. So yeah, this is gonna, this would be a good match, but there was really not that much lead up to it. I mean, if Shinsuke Nakamura did cause Aiden English to lose his voice, let's say, for whatever reason, give the reason. Yeah, don't just like, okay, this happened, so now they're gonna wrestle. We need to know why this happened, and basically, then we go, oh, okay, so that's why they're going at each other. Instead of, okay, they're just gonna fight, and that's it. Yeah, have, you still could have had it where Rusev and Aiden inter interrupted Shinsuke Nakamura's interview, but have Rusev be like, your match against Aiden, you did this to him, and now he doesn't have a voice. And he's my friend, he's my mentor, yeah. he's, you know, my confidant, whatever. Yeah. So you, you hurt him, I'm gonna hurt you, and, you know, have it be something other than just like you somehow caused Aiden English to not be able to sing and he's got a wonderful singing voice and we're all going to mess out on it so I want to face you at Fastlane. Yeah and that would have made much more sense. Mm, just I mean back in the day like when you watch a match you go okay I wonder how this got started. Yeah. You know and I don't like back in the 80s I used to watch WrestleMania and think, oh gee, I wonder how they feared, or how they feuded, you know, like when you see Sergeant Slaughter versus Hulk Hogan, and there's only like one instance where they beat each other up, or rather, Sergeant Slaughter beat Hogan up, you know, that's basically, okay, but was there more than that? I, and there probably was, I just didn't know about it, right. but back in the day, there wasn't that much of a feud. It was like, I, I hate you, you hate me. Let's fight and take it out at WrestleMania or wherever, you yeah. know. And it's kind of like what this is, sort of, but yeah. in a much shorter time. Like, I don't... And besides this week, I don't remember them being face-to-face -face with each other. Yeah. So... Plus, you have Shinsuke Nakamura, who is the Royal Rumble winner, so yes. why is he not having storylines before a match like this? Like, we should know what more about why they're going at it yeah. instead of having one showdown. Right. So, I don't know what I mean. So, in any case... I don't know who should win. I mean, I haven't really seen Rusev wrestle that much. Yeah. In a long time, so. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, I think he's a really good wrestler. He's very much a powerhouse. But then you got Shinsuke, who is the king of strong style. He can really kick a lot of ass, so. With those two in the ring together, who knows what could happen. Can Shinsuke Nakamura tap out to the accolade? Or will Rusev lose to the Bumbai? Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, see, with this match, there really isn't a person that you say, Oh, I really want to see them win. Or you go, Oh, I don't like this person. I want to see them lose, because, I mean, Shinsuke Nakamura has been on a hell of a roll yeah. lately. Rusev, ever since he partnered with Aiden English, has now become an extremely popular guy. So, it's kind of one of those things where you're invested in the match and you're interested in the match. But to say, oh, Shinsuke Nakamura's gonna win, or Rusev's gonna win, is like... I guess, who would you really want to see win more? Rather mm -hmm. than, oh, I want to see this person win because I don't like this person. I want to see them get beat up, or I want to see this person win because they deserve it. It's just... 
Yeah. I mean, it's a toss-up. Yeah. Because they both are very good in the ring. So, like, we'll see who can outpower who. And, mm -hmm. you know, I honestly don't know who can win this match. Because if you have Shinsuke lose, then it's like, oh, well, your Royal Rumble winner just lost to Rusev, you know, weeks before WrestleMania. So it's yeah. like, but then you have Rusev lose, and it's like, well, I guess he has a lot of ring rest because we hadn't seen much of him wrestle in a while. So, I mean, who knows? Do I think Shinsuke Nakamura will win? Maybe. Do I think Rusev will win? Well, if Aiden English is out there, that's a possibility. Yeah, in my opinion, it goes like this. If Nakamura loses, it's like, okay, you had your Royal Rumble match winner lose a match weeks before WrestleMania. More than likely, not going to install his momentum or hurt his momentum. As far as Rusev goes, if he loses, it's like, okay, Rusev lost to Shinsuke Nakamura. And what now? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's kind of a coin toss, because I like both of them, actually, to be honest with you. Rusev's been more entertaining than ever, so... Yeah. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's kind of up in the air, and I don't really know who's going to win. Like, it's just... Again, another wait and see, which I don't want to say, but it's true. Now, there is an intrigue about this. Say Rusev does beat Nakamura. They could have a thing where Rusev is gloating about beating Nakamura. And, oh, I beat the Royal Rumble winner. He's not as good as he says he is, and this, that, and the other thing. And possibly have something lead up to Wrestlemania or have it like Rusev's boasting about how I beat Nakamura, I beat the Royal Rumble winner, you know, brag and brag and brag about it and then maybe after Wrestlemania Nakamura switches it around to go at Rusev and try and beat him. He could go that way but, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's a guessing game. Yes, yeah, and so I'm kind of like, I don't know who's going to win. Yeah. So I don't know if I can really pick a winner. Yeah. But, right. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see when we get there. Yeah, pretty much. So then we go on to the women's title match. We have Charlotte Flair versus Ruby Riot, and who knows if the Riot Squad is going to be in her corner. Well, oh, according to this, they will be. That's what it says. But and you know, I thought about this. I think that a lot of these debuts come in, and they somehow get a title shot right away and I'm not sure if that's really necessary yeah Ruby Riot's been in on Smackdown for a few like a month or so so it's like mm, I think it's been a little longer than that yeah yeah right foul that's like okay I know she didn't go in for the NXT title I know she never right. won that I, I don't think it's her time yet. Yeah. But here's the thing. You've got Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan in her corner. They pretty well can distract Charlotte. Now Charlotte can have somebody in her corner. Who knows? Right. But the fact of the matter is, Charlotte is a veteran. She knows what she's doing. So I'm pretty sure she'll win the match. I'll be very surprised if Ruby Riot wins because I don't think it's her time. Yeah. You put the title on her now, it's going to be a waste of time because it's going to be like, okay, 
you've just given her the title when she's fresh on SmackDown. Yeah. So, what's the point, really? Uh, you know, it's almost like, okay, maybe Daniel Bryan, when he was on NXT, he came to SmackDown, and he won the United States Champion not long after that. Uh, I can't remember that far, but I'm guessing that's what happened. But, there's a lot of that somehow. Sometimes a wrestler goes in a new territory or a new show like SmackDown or Raw and they get a title opportunity not long after. So it's kind of like, I don't know, do I want Charlotte to retain? Yes, because then that means WrestleMania is coming up. Who knows if we could get Ruby Riot in the title picture then. Yeah. That would make much more sense to me. Yeah, for sure. And the way they've been going over the last two weeks, I'll say, is they're pretty much boasting about Asuka going one-on-one -on -one with Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. So it's like they've completely disillusioned the fact that Oscar's gonna decide between Alexa Bliss or Charlotte, and it's gonna be okay. Oscar's on Raw. She's gonna go for the Raw Women's Championship, so we need something for Charlotte for WrestleMania. So we'll pair her with the Riot Squad, put them in a match at Fastlane, have Charlotte win the title at Fastlane. Head into WrestleMania, give them another match at WrestleMania, and see what happens. Theory? Yes. Reality? Yet to be seen. I think it would make the most sense to have Charlotte win and see if they can somehow keep this rivalry going a little bit longer. Because, like, they've had the Riot Squad beat up on Charlotte, and then Charlotte win the matches over Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan, and then Ruby Riot got over on Becky Lynch and Naomi. So now it's like, okay, you beat two members of my team, and you beat up two of my friends, so now it's a one on one between the two of us to definitively determine who's the better grouping. Now, the Riot Squad has been more of a consistent trio than Charlotte, Naomi, and Becky, but it's been interesting and it just would make a lot of sense to have Charlotte win. Yeah. I mean, and here's the thing, too. I mean, we talked about in the beginning of the match. We have the tag team women's match. So, let's say that Carmella and Natalia lose. What's well, not to say, I know that we talked a bunch about this earlier, have Carmella make a surprise entrance and whoever wins the belt, and let's hope Charlotte does. She pins Charlotte. We have Charlotte and Carmella at WrestleMania. I feel that if you do that, it would be an absolute waste of time. Because there is nothing saying that Carmella can easily go over Charlotte in a match. Whether it's after a match against Ruby Riot. Or after a match against whoever, it just would not make any sense. Okay, but then if Charlotte goes over on Sunday, then who are we going to put her with? Like for WrestleMania, because you can put her with anybody basically, but... Yeah, of course. You know, you only have, I mean, yeah, how many more, like, 
heels do you have? You've got Mickey James. Oh, well, Ricky James is on Raw, never mind. Right. So basically, you have Liv Morgan, uh, Sarah Logan, and if you want to put Natalia and Charlotte in another match for the upteenth time, okay, fine, whatever. But I think that Charlotte should have a different opponent, A, and B, I mean... It would be an excellent feud to see maybe Charlotte and Carmella. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But if it's not Carmella, who is it? Because every other diva that I can think of is on Raw. Who would you rather see with the championship going into WrestleMania? Charlotte or Carmella? Well, if it is Charlotte, then I don't know. Maybe you could put Charlotte with... Tamina, but then again, they don't do shit with Tamina anyways. If you give the belt to Carmella, I don't know what they'll do with her. Exactly. That's the thing. I know I know what you're saying, but I'm just trying to figure out who could be another good opponent for Charlotte come WrestleMania. Because... That's kind of hard at this point. Unless you go... Have Charlotte win over Ruby at Fastlane. Have Carmella cash in the briefcase. Win the belt from Charlotte at Fastlane. And then have Charlotte try and get the belt back from Carmella at WrestleMania. Or have Ruby beat... Charlotte, have Ruby, have Carmella cash in on Ruby, have Ruby retain, and then do something with the three of them go into WrestleMania, or if Ruby wants to beat Charlotte and Carmella cash in and not be successful, you could have a rematch with Charlotte and Ruby at WrestleMania. Yeah, I would go for that. There, there's quite a few different scenarios you could go with. I mean, you could very well be on to something. For me, Charlotte just seems to be a much better wrestler and a much better overall competitor than uh, Carmella. And so if you have Carmella over Charlotte, it would just be like James Ellsworth going over on Braun Strowman. Yeah, I know. That would be pathetic. Yeah. So, I think... Yeah, definitely Charlotte should retain. It's just a matter of where we go from here now. I know. And by no means am I discounting Carmella as a ring performer at all. Carmella is an exceptional in-ring performer and an exceptional wrestler. I just feel that Charlotte is a lot better. Right. I 100% agree with that. And then who knows? I mean, down the line, we'll see what happens with Ruby Riot yeah. and Carmella. Because I don't want her to be like Baron Corbin. Sure. And yeah, that was pathetic. But so, yeah, there it is. This match is going to be interesting. I mean, I, I do agree with the fact that Carmella could potentially cash in during that match. But it's like, there's a variety of different ways you could go with it. So, to actually know for sure what's going to happen and how it's going to go, it's really a hard thing to pick. Yes. So, anyways. Charlotte Flair for the win. For sure. So anyways, we're going on now to the Take Team Championship match. We got the Usos versus the New Day. One more time. Oh yeah. When... They had the New Day win that 
with a tag team gauntlet or whatever. I at first was surprised that they were going to do this rivalry again, but at the same time, when you see the things they did during their rivalry, you're like, okay, let's do this again. <laughs> Hope to hell it's another good match. Their Hell in a Cell match was awesome. Oh, yeah. I think even though the rap battle was man, nah. it was okay, you know. It, it was entertaining, but to actually call it a rap battle is a joke. Yeah. So, I mean, they've had a really good feud. It's just unfortunate that the New Day lost the titles at the yeah. Hell in a Cell. Which, who knows if this is going to be their day a Sunday, but uh, I don't know. I really like both of them. Yeah. I think that, and it's kind of a lot of other people who, like, make shit PG and call it ish. Yeah, exactly. So, day one-ish, yeah. and it's awesome. Uh, the Russo Penitentiary is kind of going on me. Yeah. So, anyways, New Day is kind of like, yeah, they're weird, and yeah, they like to goof off and eat pancakes and throw pancakes at the audience and have booties and yeah. laugh and joke and have fun but when it comes down to it and they need to take care of business oh, by yeah. god oh. they can take care of business yeah Kofi Kingston is a beast <laughs> and sometimes people forget that because he is goofy but yeah he can turn it on man oh, yeah. so do I want to see these guys be the champions again why not because at this point, you know, the Usos have been a champion now f whenever Hell in Cell was. What was it? October? Yeah, I believe so. So, I mean, why not? I see the New Day win. That's kind of something that would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, like, if that happens, though, does it mean that their feud's still going to continue or are they going to move on? Because you still have... Rhino and Slayer, who I don't, don't know if they're on Raw now, but you have uh, Ascension, which have kind of been pussified, so they're not there. And, you know, we got a bunch of other guys, like the Bludgeon Brothers. So the possibilities for them to have other feuds besides the Usos is pretty good. Well, it seems like lately the Bludgeon Brothers have been stepping up and trying to stake a claim for the tag titles. Yeah. And for me, it was one of those things where it was like the Bludgeon Brothers were putting out there. It don't matter whether it's the Usos. Or the New Day, who were coming for those damn tag titles. Yeah. I'd much rather see New Day versus Ascension. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. So, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go with the New Day. I think that they can, yeah, sure, they can be as annoying as hell. Oh. But. <laughs> they're entertaining and they're damn good wrestlers. Yes. I mean, even if you go back to the back and forth of New Day and the Usos had this past week on SmackDown. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, the Usos were like, you guys are just tossing out pancakes and laughing and joking and you're not serious and, you know, we've beaten you before and you're just a joke and... Who Biggie got old. Straight talk and was like, You guys have been doing this since 12 or 9 years? Well, we've been doing this for 5 and we've been. We're the longest running Raw Tag Champs and we you will be the 5 time Tag Champs and it was good. Even though it had been a while. Since the Usos of the New Day had a match yeah. against each other, that reminded you just how good these two teams are on the mic and how good their rivalry was and how good 
potentially a continuation of the rivalry could be. Yes. And I'm sure it'll be an amazing match come Sunday. Kinda had a brain fart just now. So I'm not saying you know, their feud will continue through right. WrestleMania. Yes. They're making history with the women's division. How about a take team Iron Man match at WrestleMania? You could do that. I think you'd have to find a way to build that up yeah. over the next three weeks. I guess that would be a little bit difficult. Yeah. Well, that's the thought. Could it be done? More than likely. What else is there for them to do? Tag team last duo standing. That's a good one, actually. Yeah, you know, I don't know. We'll see, because you still have Usos can take on anybody else. You can still yeah. have a feud with, you know, bring Ascension into it. And then, because feuds gotta end sometime, and yeah. I think the Usos and New Day have to end it, you know, basically, at that Sunday, because who knows what more they can do. It's, yeah. It's kind of that time you know i just can't really think of what else they can do you know trying to throw ideas around and it's kind of hard you know with the usos and the new day it reminds me a lot of the hardys the dudleys and edge and christian yes when they were doing their series of matches it's how far can you go with it before you finally go okay we've exhausted all our options we don't know what else to do we've pretty much done it all let's put this to bed and move on and go on to other rivalries whether it be with the bloods and brothers or maybe the ascension or Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable, or mm. Frazongo, or... See, here, here it is, another idea. A fatal four-way take team match. Yeah. You've got the Usos, whoever wants to go. And of course, they do a Freebird style. You've got Usos for Frazongo. You've got... Ascension, the Bludgeon Brothers. You have Benjamin and Gable. Who knows? I don't know. So maybe take Team Gauntlet. I, yeah, that'd be a That's kind of like, you know, that would be cool. But only time will tell. You know. Yeah. I think I'd like to see the Usos carry the titles on Sunday. Let's see if they can win the titles. Then, who knows where you can go from there. Usos are really good champions, you know. They went from being faces to heels to tweeners. Yeah. Sounds like, okay, that's great. Let's see a New Day win the titles. We'll see where they go. Yeah. WrestleMania will be interesting either way. Well, absolutely. So, is that it for you? or? Yeah, pretty much. So then we go on to the United States Championship match. We've got Bobby Roode versus Randy Orton. And I'm really gonna shock the shit out of you. Because I think the winner needs to be Randy Orton. Because think about it this way. Uh -huh. Randy Orton wins the title on Sunday. He will be a Grand Slam champion. Right. He's been a tag team champion. He's been a WWE champion. He's been the Intercontinental champion. He's been the world champion. If he wins the US title, he will be Grand Slam champion. You know, and I don't know. I love Bobby Roode. I think he's awesome. But the fact of the matter is, you know, Randy Orton hasn't had a title in a long time. True. 
I mean, since last well, year. Since so, WrestleMania. Yeah, so... Let's see, and you know what? The first time, and see Randy Orton win this match. And how far will he go with the U.S. title? You better not fucking put him with Dolph Ziggler afterwards. Yeah. But uh, this will be a good match. I can't wait to see it. I'd like to see who goes over. Like I said, I root for Bobby Roode all the time. I never root for Randy Orton, so it surprises me myself. That I want to see Randy Orton go over. Randy Orton and Bobby Roode should definitely be a good match. I think it would definitely make sense to have Randy win the U.S. title and be a Grand Slam champion. And maybe if Bobby wins, you know, okay, that's fine. You could probably continue the feud with Randy and Bobby and then at some point have Orton finally win the title. I also feel like it's one of those things where, okay, Bobby Roode loses the U.S. title to Randy Orton. Randy Orton's next opponent is... Yes, I know. Bobby Roode's next opponent is... Exactly. Fill in the blank with whoever you want. Yeah. Now, Randy Orton has more than put out a performance and a viable example of deserving to be a Grand Slam champion. Can he do it against Bobby on Sunday? More than likely. It would just be who would work well against Randy Orton for the U.S. title and if Bobby loses the U.S. title to Randy Orton hopefully they won't completely kill Bobby's momentum and yeah you know keep him going strong and then have him either challenge for the U.S. title again or maybe later down the road, push him for the WWE title? Yeah, before he retires, he has to have the WWE title. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He has to have the WWE title. He's already been the TNA champion. He's already been King of the Mountain champion. He's now in WWE. The granddaddy of all wrestling promotions. Let's put the WWE title on Bobby Roode. He is well deserving. I don't care who says otherwise. Yeah. You know, it's high time. You know, I mean, the guy is 40 years old. Yeah. The guy, it's like... I normally don't like to see guys older than that win the title. But the fact is... He deserves it. Yeah. He has to have that title at some point, either this year or early next year. Yeah. Because he's, I don't know, I just, he's one of the best. Yeah, And you've sure. already seen a lot of them have that title. This guy definitely should have the title. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, yeah. But anyways, I'm starting to say Randy Orton. Yeah, Bobby Roode's 40 years old, 41 years old, whatever. Yeah. He's been in the business now for 19, 20 years, something like that. What's to say he wouldn't be a good WWE champion? I mean, fuck, when he was NXT champion, it was damn good. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. The whole glorious thing, the whole heel run, if you will, that he had in NXT was good. And then they, I guess, decided, hey, let's put Bobby on SmackDown and put him as a face and see where we could go with him as a face. And so far, it's hasn't been bad. 
No. I mean, hell, you give them the U.S. title? Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, I think that these guys who jump ship to the WWE, I mean, you look at someone like AJ Styles. Yeah. You know, he come from Ring of Honor, actually, because he jumped there from TNA. Yeah. Actually, no, he was in Japan. So yeah, you get yeah. a guy, multiple champion, wherever he goes, it's pretty cool that they put the WWE title on. I mean, they gave him the United States Championship, too, but... Yeah. It's pretty cool that they gave him... And not only that, but two-time WWE Champion. Uh-huh. Fuck, you know? Yeah. So, let's do that with Bobby Roode. Why not? And, you know, it's funny to think about Bobby Roode. Well, let me rephrase that. It's interesting to think about Bobby Roode being, you know, 40 years old or whatever... But Randy's, I think, maybe... 37, 38. Yeah, I was going to say, not that much of a difference between the two of them. I actually thought Randy was a little older, but I'm sure he is, like, late 30s. Yeah, oh yeah, he is late 30s. So, but there is the thing. You think know. both still go? Oh yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Let's see... What happened Sunday? Well, still say Randy Orton winning the title. Yeah. You know, down the road, let's go see what happens with Bobby Roode. I want to see Bobby Roode get the WWE title. Oh, yeah. You know, for sure. That's definitely in the near future. And let's make it happen. So, yeah, I'm Randy Orton for the win. And I never thought I would say that, but you know what? He might as well be the Grand Slam champion. Yeah. I mean, where Roman Reigns is now. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'd say... You know what, for me, either one of these guys winning wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. So... I'm just gonna go... If Randy wins, great. He... Much deserves to be a Grand Slam champion. If Bobby wins, he will have earned a victory over one of the all-time greats. And see where either one of them go. What happens? Fair enough. So now we go on to the main event. We've got... The WWE title on the line, AJ Styles versus John Cena versus Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin versus the has been Dolph Ziggler. So this will be a good six pack title match. And uh, how this whole thing came about is just like, <laughs> yeah, you know. Shane and Brian's payoff better be good, man. Oh, yeah. Because, oh my god, you got Shane McMahon hating on Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens for some reason. You've got Brian who says, hey, you know what, AJ Styles, I'm going to put you in a handicap match. That's a good idea. Hey, we're going to do a triple threat match. That's a good idea. For what? Yeah. You know, so it's like, okay, now we have Shinsuke Nakamura as the Royal Rumble winner of 2018. You've got the dream match that everybody wants to see from New Japan. You've got AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura who will go at it at WrestleMania. And I don't think it's going to be as good as the New Japan matches. But you know what? It's going to be awesome. I hope that they main event WrestleMania this year. Now we have this match. So it's like, okay, you got Emo Cena going, I don't know if I have it anymore. And then you have Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens for some reason, all their best friends, and now all of a sudden it's like... They're frenemies. Yeah. Yeah, SmackDown, Sami Zayn pinning Kevin Owens. Yeah. 
You got Baron Corbin, who should have had the title a long time ago. So that's out, you know. And then you got Dolph Ziggler, for who I could give two shits about. So it's like, why would you have... See, this is the problem with the WWE nowadays. You're giving them a match, like... Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, but nobody wanted, including myself, because it already happened. If you take AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura out of the fucking picture, then people are going to lose their shit and they're going to boycott the hell out of your pay-per-view. This happens all the time. And now you got... Well, it's a pretty interesting match, because I don't think either one of those people should win. I mean, think about this. I mean, why the hell would you have Kevin Owens win the title? Because he's going to probably have a match at WrestleMania with Sami Zayn. Why would you have Sami Zayn win the title? Same thing. Then you got John Cena. He whines because he doesn't know if he has it anymore. And then he wants to go on SmackDown. And then he wants to go on Raw. And what happens? He loses. He's getting old, and fucking who cares? And then you get Dolph Ziggler, who, oh, I look at me, I hate gimmicks. Oh yeah, because he does the super kick, and he does the weird awakening, because he doesn't have a fucking move he can pull out of his ass. So let's put him in a picture. No, I don't want to see Dolph Ziggler versus Shinsuke Nakamura. You better have AJ come out, the WWE Champion, on Sunday, Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of pissed off people. And I don't care if, oh, it's just New Japan. Who cares? You know, why would you want to see that in WWE? The fact of the matter is, you have AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania. Because all hope will be lost. What next? You already blow the dirt sheet with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Don't fucking ruin AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. I think the most likely to come out of the match as champion for sure would be AJ Styles and maybe John Cena. Only because if you have John Cena win, okay, yeah, he'd be 17 times champion. Whatever. <laughs> but I mean, he's been on top as champion many times before and he could still do it. But the most viable person to win this match should be AJ Styles. So that way, you can keep your, I guess you can call it a dream match, with Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles, and then you can do whatever with the rest of them. If you have put Kevin Owens against Sami Zayn at Mania, fine. You can either leave John Cena out of WrestleMania, or the next three weeks put him against somebody. Fine and dandy. Maybe you could do something with Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler. Who knows? But the overall consensus is if you have AJ win the title and have him go against Nakamura at WrestleMania, it would be a really good thing. On the off chance that John Cena would win. You know, it could be interesting seeing Cena against Nakamura. But the most reasonable thing to do would have AJ keep the title and go against Nakamura at Mania. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll give you an example. So last year, you had Randy Orton win the Royal Rumble. And then the same night, John Cena becoming WWE Champion. The dream match, because these guys feuded together. Yeah. The dream match would have been having them in the main event 
at WrestleMania 33. It would have been pretty cool. It would have been awesome. But no, they went with Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. But wait a minute. Randy Orton was part of the Wyatt family. Well, we'll just have him turn for no goddamn reason. So now it's like, okay, why would you want to repeat that this year? I'm not saying they're going to repeat it this year. But you've got AJ Styles against these guys. And who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. So I don't know. The only thing I don't really agree with is the fact that, okay, yes, you had Randy Orton win the Royal Rumble. Yes, you had John Cena win the championship for the 16th time. Yes, you had Bray Wyatt become champion at the Elimination Chamber. And then also have Randy join the Wyatt family. It seemed to be... It was Randy Orton doing whatever it took to have a championship match. Could they have stuck with Randy against John Cena? Yes. But they went the way Bray Wyatt. They had Randy join the Wyatt family for a little bit. Then have Randy turn on Bray to develop that match for the championship at WrestleMania. Did it make a whole lot of sense? No. In hindsight, it was Randy Orton trying to do what he had to do to keep his opportunity at the match for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. This is just... AJ Styles has got to do his best to successfully defend the championship and the Sex Packs Challenge on Sunday to go to WrestleMania and face Nakamura. Plain and simple. Well, that's true. Alright, well, I say AJ, so then I guess you say AJ. I'm up for seeing AJ Styles against Nakamura again. I think it'd be good. I think it would be good, especially because it'll be the first time in the United States. Yes. So, who knows? I mean, that should be awesome. Why wouldn't anybody want to see that? And there's all this rumor about John Cena versus Undertaker. Well, Undertaker just retired. Why would you want to pull him out of retirement? Again, not again, but you know, it's like, the guy, leave him alone. I don't think they'd have a chance at building a really good rivalry between Taker and Cena in three weeks. No. And John Cena even said it himself. He said he was going to challenge Undertaker at WrestleMania on Raw one night, but then he goes, oh, that's not going to happen. It's impossible. Right. Well, yeah, basically because with Undertaker being, I guess, legitimately retired now, if he chooses to wrestle again, it would have to be on his terms and probably something that would make sense for him. So. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. Looking forward to that. I mean, they very well could do WrestleMania, John Cena, and Undertaker, but they need longer than three weeks. Yeah, I know. But. Anyways. So, this is been an interesting review. I yeah. mean, I don't know, it's kind of an up in the air thing, you know. What's well, some of the matches you yeah. have? You know, so yeah, it's just like, okay, I kind of want to see who wins. I know who I want to win. Yeah. It's just... Anyway, so next weekend is going to be, we're going to talk about the Hall of Fame and who should be in the future Hall of Fame. Oh god. The last we're still gonna talk about here I'll show you my list and then we could still talk about it but Yeah. So that's next week. The week after that is look back at WrestleMania thirty. And yeah, so this has been Fast Lane. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, for sure. So anyway 
Find me and Matt. This is Killer Kyle. And this has been Wheels of Fury. Talk to you later. We'll see you next time.